Okay, so we have covered uh, the first four billion years. So towards the end of four billion years, about 850 million years ago, ice covered the whole of planet Earth or majority of the Earth's surface was covered with ice. Now, this is significant. Actually, something that is not out of ordinary because ice age, global ice age has occurred a number of times before that. And it lasted for a hundred, more than a hundred million years. Imagine not just 1 million years, not just 50 million years, not just 100 million years, but a couple of hundred million years. So towards the end of that uh, period, what you call it as the Proterozoic period, right? There was this, uh, Earth was plunged into another ice age, right, for close to 200 million years. From 850 million years to about 650 to 630 million years. So we have about 200 million years or 220 million years of ice. Earth was freezing, frigid, cold, covered with ice. No land animal, of course, because animals were not formed during that time. Uh, but the properties of water is different from other liquid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created water very special as it as the temperature uh, decrease, right? As the as water approach this freezing point, instead of continue to contract, because anything you 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 make it cold, that thing will contract. Okay, we make it hot and we'll expand. So instead of it continue to contract at four degrees Celsius, water will expand. Uh, that is a property that Allah has decreed for water, not for other liquid. And that is something very special. Why expand? Because, you know, this is part of Allah's rahmah, Allah's blessings and favors uh, for living things on earth. Because as, as the water, you know, uh, as the liquid water, uh, plunge in temperature at four degrees Celsius instead of it contracts further, it expands. When it expands, the density becomes what? It becomes lighter. Okay. The density becomes lighter. It does not become heavier. So things expand. So it occupies more space with number still, uh, what do you call it? A fixed number of atoms and molecules, but it, it, it occupies a bigger space. So therefore it is less dense. When it's less dense, ice will actually float on water because the density of water is one we take it as one the density of ice is less than one because why because the water that forms the ice expanded uh, and so even if you have the whole earth covered with ice it doesn't mean that the whole of the ocean was frozen solid only on the surface of the of the oceans earth oceans was frozen solid but under the ocean how deep the ice went through, we do not know. It might be one kilometer deep, it might be two kilometers deep, it might be a few hundred meters deep, we do not know. But what we know is that, of course, under that sheet of ice, there was water. And when there is water, there is life. So life actually continues during the ice age, the last ice age of the Proterozoic period. Okay, but this life is in the form of cells. We call it as the eukaryotic cells and some of uh, prokaryotic cells. Okay, so these cells, right, it becomes more and more complex. Uh, so it forms simple organism. Okay, but this organism actually survived under the earth vast ocean during that time, which was covered with ice. So actually it was protected uh, from any harmful radiation from the sun by that ice sheet, that thick ice sheet. And it continues until now. No, uh, it is surprising that under the uh, Antarctica, the Antarctica's ocean, where you have ice about might be two hundred meters deep, three hundred meters, not even one kilometer deep, uh, but but one kilometer deep is is inside the the Antarctica's uh, mainland. But you talk talking about the ocean because the ice sheet covering the Antarctica uh, outreach towards the uh, the ocean and it covered part of the it covers part of the ocean that surrounds the sea surrounding the Antarctica island or we call it the continent so about 400 500 meters 
But deep under it, right, scientists have deep, deep a drill inside and they went diving there. They saw animals. Subhanallah. And, and it, it was uh, a very strange, very strange animals, not exposed to sunlight, not exposed to uh, what do you call it, influenced by other creatures. They have their own environment, right? They have their own, what do you call it, um, a symbiotic relationship between other animals. Okay, uh, so strange creatures that could not be found any anywhere else, and that is how Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala showed us Allah's great creations and directly right informing us or telling us of Allah's greatness. Allah can create anything that Allah wants, even creatures that that is, I mean, beyond our imagination that such creatures such creatures physical creatures, I mean, can exist, subhanAllah. So, a multitude of creatures lived under that, that great ice sheet in Antarctica Ocean. And what more inside the Antarctica's land, right? Because the uh, ice on the, on the Antarctica is about two kilometers, three kilometers deep. And there is a very, uh, I mean, they have discovered already that there, uh, there is a liquid lake under that thick sheet of ice on Antarctica's mainland. Imagine, right, under two kilometers deep of ice, there is water, not just water, but somehow like a lake. They knew it because they use radio wave, x-rays or whatever, right, to map out that, that water. And the uh, scientists continue to drill, try to drill to reach that water, but they stop short of drilling right through to that lake. Why did they, all the scientists stop short of, of drilling all the way through and see what's the content of the water? Because the scientists are worried. This water, right, this lake and trapped under that kilometers of ice, this water, this water, this water has been there for God knows how, how long. It might be there since the Proterozoic period means that it might be there before 500 million years ago. It might be there 600 million years ago. 600 million or 700 million. It might be there even more than a billion years ago. Now, you really do not know what bacteria, primordial bacteria, primordial creature that exists. I'm not talking about big creatures, mammals, no, but these are all cells, right? That exist and have their own ecosystem under that thick sheet of ice. They feed among each other, they have symbiotic relationship and so forth. You do not know what will the effect of those bacteria on creatures like us that just came into being existence on this planet Earth less than a million years ago. Might be less than 100,000 years ago, might be 200,000 years ago, we do not know, but we are very recent introduction on this planet Earth. Very, very, very recent. And we're talking about Homo sapiens, the animalistic Homo sapiens. If you talk about, about Adamistic, uh, Adamic, not Adamistic, Adamic Homo sapiens, the descendants of Nabi Adam Islam, it might be we are much more recent and, and, and new right? uh, addition to this planet Earth. And we talk about civilizations that started about 6,000 years ago, there was just a blink of an eye. You talk about, if you want to compare the history of the earth of 4.5 billion years of history. So we are very, very new and recent introduction on this planet. Whereas we do not know what that water inside the thick sheet of ice contain. It might contain bacteria that might be harmful to us. It might have bacteria that if released to this atmosphere, and they have been there, they are the ancient, what do you call it, uh, cells, right? They were not affected by any creatures that happened the, or appeared even before Ice Age. Oh, sorry, even before the, uh, the dinosaurs age. So what will be the effect if there is this bacteria? What will the effect be if it is being released to our current world? They've been trapped there. 
just like Yajud and Majud, you know, being trapped by, by Zulkarnain's wall, right? And in that wall breaks and it will break. And yes, I mean, the cracks are already there, already there. The Prophet Wasallam has informed us, right? And Yajud Majud will come out and Yajud Majud will bring disaster on this planet Earth. And when will it come out? It will come out after Dajjal. So Dajjal will appear first. Dajjal will be slaughtered and killed by Nabi Isa AS. Then only after that, Yajuj and Majuj will appear. And when it appears, it or whatever, we do not know what type of creature is Yajuj and Majuj. It might be mammals. It might be some other creatures that we cannot even imagine. But when it appears, Allah SWT says in Surah Hajj, if Yajuj and Majuj has been open, exposed, right, let it let out on this planet Earth, they will cover this planet Earth just like water falling from the mountain. You see, subhanAllah, water falling, cascading from the mountain so much. That's how Yajuj Majuj will come out and we cover the whole of planet, almost all whole of planet Earth. To the point even Nabi Isa alayhi salam couldn't, or no, I do, cannot say couldn't, but there's a past tense. There's according to a hadith, right? Nabi Isa alayhi salam and Imam Mahdi, both of them, they defeated Dajjal, but they cannot defeat Yajuj and Majuj. Allah SWT commanded Nabi Isa, and I will command Nabi Isa alayhi salam, and will, of course, uh, by virtue of Nabi Isa alayhi salam, Imam Mahdi, and all those Muslims to hide inside certain mountains or whatever. Right, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the destruction of Yajud Majuj himself. So Allah will send some disease to this Yajud Majuj and they will all die. So Yajud Majuj is something that is very, very fearful. But they are not being trapped. Okay. So just like this bacteria under that, that kilometers of ice sheet in the Antarctica, what if scientists drill all the way down and reach the water and pull out the drill bit and together with the drill bit all those water together with the bacteria and the bacteria exposed to the air and after that the bacteria will what propagate increase in number you can just imagine we only have that coronavirus just one family of a family of a range of coronavirus members yeah, coronavirus is, is a family member of certain virus. One of it is SARS in, back in 2003. Now we have uh, the COVID, another member of coronavirus, and we, of course, mutate. And there will be another coronavirus emerging from bats or from other avians because these avians, Allah created them. Uh, uh, they have disease and bacteria and virus that attacks them that does not attack us. But Allah can easily switch that virus switch it on and switch off it and suddenly that virus can attack us just like this COVID-19. So imagine that COVID-19. COVID-19 is mild actually. Of course, it's very dangerous but compared to Ebola virus, it is quite mild. Okay. But imagine if that virus trapped under there, exposed and is, is virulent, is, is, it is, I mean, it has never come into contact to any mammals, it can instantly kill all mammals. It might be, or it might be, it might be harmless. We do not know. So scientists, cannot take that chance. So they stop short of drilling all the way through that water. They wanted to drill all the way to that water to see what's the content of oxygen inside that water and indirectly will tell us or directly will tell us the content of oxygen in the atmosphere and what were the conditions during that time right? and how old is that lake and from the water they, they take out, they do the, 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 the uh, what do you call it, um, radioactivity aging and, and dating uh, and so forth, they can discover a lot of things, but the chances, the risk is too high for them to take it. So they stop short. Uh, these are responsible scientists, right? They are not looking for fame, they're looking for money. But if people want to look for money and fame, they usually drill all the way through and there's it. You open up the Pandora box and all those things will come out. We do not know what will happen and you can't put it back there. We cannot seal it back there because once it comes out, whatever comes out, cannot come back in. Uh, so better to leave certain things alone, right? Better to investigate certain things with a long stick instead of directly right, touching that thing or disturbing that thing. So that is uh, what they call it ice, right? So ice, because water expands at four degrees Celsius. So when it, it reach to that solid state, 
at zero degrees, it is lighter than water, less dense than water, so it floats, so there's water under it. So therefore, there were creatures, bacteria, right, simple cell animals that lived under that ocean, that frozen ocean during that ice age of the, the last ice age of the Proterozoic period. Then suddenly, right, the temperature increased. Do not know why, how, right? Uh, there might there are speculations. It might be some super volcano erupting. But you know, super volcano when they erupt, they emit a lot of sulfur dioxide, which will uh, cover the atmosphere itself and plunge the Earth into another ice age. So we do not know, right? Or it might be that there is some disturbance in Earth orbit around the sun, make it a little bit further from away from the sun, or make it a little bit closer to the sun, and therefore. Uh, of the increased heat from the sun, the ice melts, we do not know. It might be that the solar system with the sun in the middle, the sun is pulling all the solar system with all its children all the way across its journey uh, around the uh, Milky Way galaxy, right? And along its journey, it, the sun might encounter certain stars, right? Exploding stars or cluster of stars that might I mean, disturb the gravitational, uh, what do you call it, balance of the solar system, or it might change the orbit of the Earth, or uh, the Earth and the solar system, uh, everything will bath with increased radiation from nearby stars. We do not know. So a lot of possibilities. What, 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 but what we do know is that the temperature increased, right, towards the end of Proterozoic period. And that actually, when the Earth exit the Ice Age and enter the warm period, that marks what the scientists call as the Cambrian period. So the Cambrian period, right, uh, is around this, at this mark, 545 million years or 565 million years. Let's take it an average 550 million years ago. 550 million years ago. Now, why is this mark is important? Because when scientists studied fossils, when they study the strata of Earth layers, right, and they reached to the to the layer that is 545-50 million years ago, they found out that during that period of 545 million, 550, 555 million years, there were so many types of creatures family of creatures, not just individual creatures. When are talking about creatures, animals, right? For example, dogs, right? We have bulldogs, we have pit bull, we have terrier, we have golden retriever. So we have so many, many types of dogs, cats, we have Siamese cat, we have furry cats, we have Egyptian cat, so many, many types of cat, but it belongs to just one family cat. And that is the domestic cat. What about cats as in tigers? And lions, they, are, they also belong to the cat families. Now, I'm not talking about the family itself. I'm talking about different types of families. There were so many, many families of animals in the animal kingdom, much more than the animals, the, family, the number of families of animals that we can find today. And it appeared quite suddenly. So that was the great mysteries. Now, before we can appreciate all these things, we have to see how scientists classify animals in the animal kingdom. Okay? Uh, this is what uh, scientists classify and this classification of, of animals. It starts with kingdom. Now the kingdom right, is actually, scientists say it is the highest level on the biological classification scale. All living creatures beside trees, are classed as part of the Animalia Kingdom. And it includes what? It includes sea animals, land animals, and also avians, those flying right in the air. So those are animal kingdoms. No, no all these animals belong to animal kingdoms. So we belong to the kingdom of animals. Now, after that, that kingdom, we can divide into several, what we call it as phylum, classified to several phylums. Now, phylum, splits animal by major characteristics. We have vertebrates, those with backbones, fish, birds, mammals like us, right? We have our backbones, vertebrae, 
So all these creatures we call vertebrates. And we have in invertebrates, those without any backbones, just like, you know, uh, octopus. And we have other types of phylum like snails, right? And we have phylum like uh, um, spiders. We call it arachnids with eight legs. And we have also phylum of the insects with six legs. And we have those considered as, uh, yeah, they sort of, of creatures. Lah. And so classification becomes like that vertebrates. Now, one of the vertebrates, right, us, uh, sorry, uh, one of the phylum with vertebrates, right, they are called the chordota phylum, not vertebrates. I don't know, know why they call it chordota. It might be some Latin name. Okay. Now, the chordota phylum or all phylums, each individual phylum can be classified further, can be broken further into what is called as classes. So class distinguishes further the phylum. Now, one of the class of vertebrates is fish, right? So fish, all fish are divided into chondrit. I do not know how to pronounce these things. Chondritites, 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 maybe, or uh, cartilaginous fish with bones, and also osteocytes or bony fish. So there are two types of fish. So that class of fish, so sorry, that phylum of fish broken into what is called as fish with soft bones, just like, you know, uh, uh, the Malays call it ikan padi, okay, stingrays. Uh, those with, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, the bones is very soft, cartilage, ruam in Malay. Uh, and also bony, bony fish, those with hard bones, just like any other ordinary fish. So these are classes of fish. Then after that, every class broken into several orders according to physical characteristics. So we have fish, right, with, you know, just like mantra, mantra rays or whatever, uh, stingrays or oh, any other fish with cartilaginous uh, characteristics and we have also bony fish right uh, and and all these bony fish can be classified further into whether it is big small or whatever okay so these are orders now and after that it broken the, uh, into family so each order has several families now family follows from order by placing into groups by further physical characteristics for example cod coldfish pollock and we think all members of the Gadia family and share features such as all having three dorsal fins. So instead of two dorsal fins, they have three. Imagine where is another dorsal fin? Okay. So all these fish, they have three dorsal fins. So that's how, how scientists uh, make sense of all this multitude and, and, and so many varieties of animals on this planet Earth. So they divide into groups and families and class and after that genus genus is a further final breakdown right for example the coat are the gadus genus to differentiate them from other fish in the gadia family and then after that we go to species and species is the final step and pinpoints the exact creature for example the atlantic coat the atlantic coat species name is gadus mohua now we're talking about fish let's talk about the uh the primates right us humans Look at this, right? We have the kingdom. Oops. Uh, kingdom animals, right? And then we have the codates, animals with backbones. So all animals with backbones called codates. So we are from we humans, we are classified as the phylum codata. And then we have the class because codates have so many types of animals, right? Uh, and so therefore those animals that has fur or hair on them and milk glands and give birth life, right? So they are called mammals. So we are of the phylum codata and class mammals. Okay. And mammals doesn't have to live on land. Mammals can also live in water, just like whales and dolphins. They give birth life, but they don't have any fur and they do not have any hair, but they have milk glands. Right, the uh, the baby dolphins and the baby whales, they, I mean, they they, they suck uh, milk from the mother, 
Uh, so they keep close in contact with the mother, even though they are, they are swimming in the sea like fish. Uh, so how you want to know whether it is a mammal or not? Just look at the fin. If the fin is horizontal, then it is a mammal. So dolphins and also whales, their fins at the back is horizontal. But if let's say that creature in the sea, that marine creature is not of mammals, it's of the fish uh, class, and so therefore the fin is vertical. So you have sharks, right? Their fins are vertical. So they have and all other fish, their fins are vertical, not horizontal. And interestingly, right, uh, whales and 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 uh, dolphins, they are what do you call it? Uh, their fins is horizontal, but then they have two bones jutting out from the main body to the end of their body, which constitutes the fin. And each of these bones broken into or differentiate into five smaller bones, just like our feet, just like our hand. We have one bone jutting out right here. And then after that, it broken up into five smaller bones. So the actually the anatomy of dolphins and fish is almost similar to us humans and other primates. Right? So they have that five things. And you look at other primates, for example, you look at, uh, um, so, sorry, you look at other mammals, uh, you can see that, that their hands and their feet usually have close to, if not four, then five bones, just like us. Uh, so that is why, you know, uh, this caused uh, scientists to speculate that we all come from same species. And then after that, we differentiated into different orders. And then what do you call it as, as uh, evolution? Now, again, right, uh, except for Nabi Adam, it's not impossible that Allah's uh, mechanism for creation on this planet Earth is through micro changes in the body of those creatures that, that accumulated across vast span of time to form to another creature and what we call this process as evolution. It is not something that is impossible against Islam. It's only if you apply to Nabi Adam alayhi salam, then that is against Islam. Because why? Because Allah mentions clearly without any slightest doubt in Surah Al-Baqarah, that Allah SWT created Nabi Adam straight away from clay. And we all are children of Nabi Adam AS. So we are not subjected to that evolution of animals, the mass evolution of animals. So our body state, right? Our, uh, what do you call it, uh, shape and the physical characteristics remain the same. We are not subjected to evolution much like you know, gene and also the malaika, the angels, they are not subjected to evolution. So my um, opinion, and I might be wrong, right? My thinking is that those creatures that Allah created and Allah endowed them with roh, spirit from him, these creatures, they are not subjected to evolutions. But those creatures without roh, and all those are other animals, they might be subjected to evolution. Might subjected, I might not be subjected, we do not know, but on the surface, from all the evidence gathered uh, as of now, uh, all these animals, uh, they are subjected to evolution. So that's my thinking, I might be wrong, so um, just take it with a pinch of salt, okay? So then after that, we have uh, order, the prime, uh, from class, we have order. So there are many, many mammals. Okay, uh, we have cats are mammals, dogs are mammals, right? Uh, elephants are mammals, zebras, horses, all those are mammals. Uh, all those with fur and hair on them, right? They are mammals. But one of those mammals, right? Uh, we call them as primates. So that is the order. So we are the order of primate in the class of mammals in the phylum of chordates. And horse, or oh, sorry, cats, Right, uh, in the order of uh, what do you call it, the cat family. Okay, oh sorry, the, the order of the cat and the class of mammals. 
And then primates, there are so many, many monkeys and, and all these we call as primates are chimpanzees, orangutans, and, and, and gorillas. All these are primates. They have been differentiated into families. So we belong to the hominids family. And these are, I mean, uh, defined as primates with relatively flat faces and three-dimensional vision. Subhanallah. Flat face. If you look at chimpanzees, they don't have flat face. Their mouth protruded out, their jaws protruded out. They have flat uh, forehead, almost flat forehead, those chimpanzees. And also uh, gorillas and, and orangutans, right? They have this, this mouth uh, jutted out. But we, our mouth is almost flat. Our face is flat. So we can easily do sujud. Allah created that way. To do sujud to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Easily to do sujud to Allah. But of course, we Muslims, you can say that. We can't say that to, to the non-Muslims. You are talking from religious perspective, not talking from the scientific perspective. Yeah, correct. It's true. right? Because you want to talk about science, from scientific perspective, you have to, uh, what do you call it, suspend any religious judgment and any religious view. So I'm talking from religious perspective because I believe you're all Muslims here. So we are belonging to the hominids family of the order primates of the class mammals of the phylum Chordata. And Chordata is animals with backbones. So we have backbones, flat face, right? And uh, we have collarbones and grasping fingers. So these are primates, right? And they use, the primates use this to swing to, to, uh, from branch to branch on trees and then to collect things and then to, to, to make certain things. Only primates have the ability to build something. You can't find any other order of mammals, other orders of mammals, cats or dogs or whatever, right? Have the same ability like primates to create things because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not give them the ability to grab things to have differentiated fingers. They might have their legs, right, stuck together. They might be ungulate with two toes or three toes, right? Uh, just like, you know, chicken, right? They have three, three toes there, or you have two, just like, you know, horses and also camels, right? Two toes, uh, but they can't use it because it's just, you know, almost fixed like that. Uh, so it is not flexible. Allah gives this thing. flexibility to the primates. And out of that, all the primates uh, that Allah created, Allah created a subset of the primates, the family of primates with flat face. Right? And then after that, endowed with what? With the ability to stand upright. So we have so many hominids with flat face. Right, but not all of them can stand up, right? Only one of them can stand up, right? And that that family that can stand up, right? Of all the family of hominids, the scientists call it as the genus. So genus is classified as the Homo family with the ability to stand upright and with large brain capacity. We have, you know, fossils of uh, hominids, uh, flat face. Right, almost a flat face, but they do not have large brain capacity. We have a large brain capacity and we can stand upright. So once we can stand upright, we free our hands to do more things. Because if you look at other hominids families, monkeys, chimpanzees, orangutans, whatever, they walk on force, even though they can stand, right? They can sit down and they can free their hands to do whatever they want to do. But their hands is almost like their legs as powerful as their legs, whether they swing on trees, right, with both their hands and their legs, it functions like their legs, or they walk on land on four, on four, uh, what do you call it, on their two legs and their two hands. They do not walk on two legs just like us. Because to walk on two legs, you must have that balance. Your pelvis must be just right to support your upper body. And then your spine, right, cannot be bent like that. Your spine, even though it is supple, it is just like S shape, but it, it, it can be supported by your pelvis. Then you can then can stand upright. If not, you cannot stand upright. You do not have that muscle to hold your body. And you do not have that vertebrates, backbones to support. And your, your, your backbones might be curved like that instead of an S shape. Now we have our spine S shape. 
is not straight because once if we have a spine with straight just like that ramrod straight we cannot bend we're not going to be flexible we cannot turn sideways you're going to be rigid just like that just that when if you put a rod behind you you cannot bend you cannot turn you cannot do so you're not flexible so once we have a supple, sub, supple uh, spine with s shape that's where you can bend here you can bend there subhanallah but there is a limit to it that is the limit to that supple spine if you have a long supple spine like that it will fall it will be broken it is not going to be supple enough it cannot support that is the limit to that height for any spine that is supple enough and s shape so that so that that creature can stand up right and can move and can turn and can bend and can bend backwards and forward and bend sideways this and that there's a limit to that height and that height is around at most at most one and a half meter of that 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 length of the spine it might be less than it might be one meter so you add that to the length of the leg which is about one meter right or half a meter or something like that so you have the total height of that creature to be from 1.5 to maybe two meters higher than that is going to be harmful for that creature and that is why if you look around you study around you look at any humans taller than two meters they do not have long life recently there was this tallest person in america about 2.2 meters uh close to about eight feet high right uh, very tall but he just recently died uh, at the age of 32 years old he cannot live long because the spine cannot support it and you put pressures on all other organs in the body. Uh, and so therefore, those who are very tall, they cannot just move around like that. They're not flexible. They need to be supported on sticks. They have to walk on sticks or whatever, right? Uh, they have to support themselves. That's how Allah SWT put a limit to our height, uh, homo sapiens or Nabi Adam's children. And that is why those, those what they call it, uh, narrations that people in the past they were very tall 60 feet high 50 feet high these are based on bibles right judeo-christian traditions not based on al-quran al-quran never say that they are tall giant creatures only the bible says that and somehow or other these stories uh, get to into our islamic tradition and gets into the book of tafsir and gets into the book of hadith and uh, therefore scholars right uh, start to believe that this is the truth this is the fact well in the past we do not have any scientific knowledge to whether to disprove or approve that but now we have that scientific knowledge and we know that we can we can easily apply that scientific knowledge and disprove those belief or those thoughts so it is not real and whatever pictures, you know, there are certain pictures uh, distributed in the internet, so widely shared in the internet of, of uh, uh, archaeologists, right? Uh, I mean, uh, dusting away these giant skeletons, right? and they say this belong to the past people in the past because they were giants. And so that's the direct proof that they were giants. Well, that picture has been doctored, actually. It's been... I mean, even National Geographic admitted that picture, right, was submitted to National Geographic because National Geographic organized a contest for those who can submit a very well doctored picture right, using Photoshop or whatever. So that picture, right, with human archaeologists, right, excavating and then dusting away this large skeleton, they were superimposed. This archaeologist superimposed on a normal skeleton, and but the Photoshop was so good that picture won prize. I think first or second, second prize. I'm not sure, but it was a hoax, right? It was a doctored picture. But some or other people want to believe that that is the direct proof that people in the past were were were, were tall and giants. No, right? Scientifically not possible at all. It will collapse. You can't find any creatures more than three, four meters tall. Even dinosaurs, right? They are four meters, five meters high, but they walk on four legs. Their spine 
right? They belong to the chordates phylum. Their spine is just to support the four legs because it's so heavy. They can't stand upright. If they stand upright, they will fall, broken to pieces. Uh, so what more if it's 60 feet high, 65 is about 30 meters or 25 meters, creatures never exist, okay? So now going back to the uh, this story, uh, so we have the genus, uh, the homo genus, which is us. And then of all the homo genus, we can stand up, right? Gorilla also can stand up, right? right? Uh, and all other, no, gorilla can stand up, right? Uh, all other homo families like homo neanderthalis, uh, homo erectus, and uh, homo habilis, all these past ancient homo families, they all belong to the genus homo. But then of all these genus, there appears this species, we'll call it as homo sapiens. So all these homo habilis, homo neanderthals, they are species. And they can intermarry. Species can intermarry each other, just like, you know, donkeys and, and horse, they can intermarry, even though they cannot give birth to, to life young. The, the, whatever uh, happens, uh, their, their youngs will die off because the DNA cannot match together. So likewise, uh, you know, between uh, humans and also monkeys, right? They're almost similar, but it's sterile. It cannot produce an offspring. So Homo sapiens is species of all the Homo families. So this is how scientists classify. So we belongs to the species Homo uh, sapiens, okay? And we belong to the genus Homo because we can stand up, right? And Homo, all these Homo families, Homo, uh, homo families, they belong to the, sorry, Homo genus, they belong to the hominids and the hominids belong to the primates and the primates belong to the mammals and mammals belong to the chordates. Now, the chordate is the one, right, that differentiates all these different types of animals. And we call it phylums. Okay. Now, the thing is that, okay, this is another example. So you have this, the animalia uh, kingdom, all these types of animals, and you reduce it to just chordata. And then you remove all these, like uh, these jellyfish, these spiders, all these things that belong to the chordata phylum. And so you have so many animals belong to the chordata phylum, including fish, including crocodiles, right? All these things, skunks and, 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 and cola bears, bears and whatever. And then after that, you reduce it further to the mammalia family, right? Uh, the mammalia class, sorry, right? Mammalia class. And you remove all those things that crocodiles, because they are reptiles and they are fish, you remove them. So you just retain those that have fur and have uh, that produce milk. So bats are still in because even though bats fly, but they actually produce milk. Yeah. And you look at the bats, right? They have these wings there. There are five bones got jutting out. So they are mammals, actually. Okay? Birds are not. Okay? Birds, they are, they are, they are, the bones for the wings is just, just one like that. So they are being removed from the from the uh, mammalia class. And from the mammalia class, you have the order carnivora. Carnivora are those animals that, that eat other animals. Okay, so you remove bats, you remove dolphins and cola bears, all these uh, insectivores, all these herbivores, right? Or uh, omnivores, you remove them. So just carnivora. So out of carnivora, a lot of animals here. Then you go to the family canidae. Canidae are those dogs families, those with mouth jutting out, right? And nose out there. So you have these fox and dogs and 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 wolf and and um, you have this, what do you call this thing? Uh, I don't know, whatever. Then after that, you have the genus Canis. So Canis, then you remove, right? Fox, fox does not belong to the family of Canis. These are dogs. And then after that, you have the species Canis lupus which is just basically wolf. So that's how you uh, scientists filter all the animals to, to just single uh, pinpointed species of animal. Okay. Now, when you're talking about that 550 million years ago, we're not talking about the multitude of species, nor do we talk about the multitude of genus, but we'll talk about the variety of phylums. That is really something else. Okay, phylums means that 
a totally different species, not just with backbones and no backbones, but a totally different species that defy classification. Now, let me show you some of the species that they found. Okay. This is the some of the strange species they found at the 550 million years ago. This is an animal. No, it's not just, you know, some ornamental abstract art. No, this is an animal. You get to walk. They found in fossils. So what type of genus is this? Sorry, what type of phylum is this? Where's the eye? There's no eye. So how does how did this creature communicate within each other? How do they reproduce? We do not know. They might use radio waves. They might use what other waves or they can feel around themselves. And what are these spikes? We do not know, right? It can be like the, the, uh, the whiskers of the, uh, the cats that can detect electromagnetic signal around us. Right? And that, that is the whiskers of the cat. You chop off the whiskers, the cat cannot balance itself, even though you know, uh, even though you can see. But if you leave the whiskers around and you the, the cat is blind, the cat can still walk comfortably on a wall without falling down because the whiskers detect the electromagnetic signal in the air. So is that the function of these spikes? We do not know. But they found it. Now, this is another creature, right? During that 550 million, another phylum. What is this? We do not know. Animals like with a trunk, with a body like, like a shrimp, how many legs do they have? This creature have? Is this the eye or is it what? We do not know. Right? So, so this is a very strange creature. And what about this creature? How you want to classify this? What is this actually? This is 550 million years ago. And you have this creature. Right? This is an animal. It's not like a shell. This is an animal. See, you see, it, it, this, this is a construction of the fossil that, that scientists get. Uh, scientists chip away right, uh, the outer layer and can see these delicate patterns on this animal's body. It's a hard shell or soft shell. We do not know. But it totally defies any classification. Look at this. This is another creature. This is a fossilized creature. Uh, it, it looks like a shrimp, but it's not a shrimp. And we do not know what it is. So all these creatures, right, they appeared in 550 million years ago at this juncture. And it is something that is of a great mystery because scientists cannot explain how this multitude of creatures came about. Because, you know, uh, we have so many types of phylums. These are phylums. We have, you know, this like uh, worm light phylum, we have the starfish-like phylums, and we have these chordates with, with what you call it, backbones, just like lizard, we have this mollusk, we have worms, right, and this is different from the hemichordata, this, this, this is like worm itself, but it can really be found on deep sea hot vents, it can survive temperatures of exceeding 100 degrees Celsius, and survive temperatures below zero degrees Celsius, how this, this creature can survive beyond our comprehension. And we have the phylums of anthropods, just like crabs. The phylum, right, uh, Cynadia, this is what, is a jellyfish? No, sorry, this is just like, uh, you know, uh, those, uh, I do not know. Reefs, right, they live in reefs might be. And we have these jellies, we have these sponges, and we have this Plazoa, subhanallah, so many types of, no, so many phylums. Different, if you want to take, we call it species, it's not species, but different types of creatures Allah created at the 550 million years. So this is what we can observe now, but there are more phylums than, than what we know, what we can see here in this slide at the 550 million years ago. But all those creatures, they went extinct. Phylums. Right, talking about phylum. So, talking about, uh, and so that's why um, they, 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 they draw uh, a graph and they say that 550 million years ago, the number of orders, not just phylums, number of orders at this juncture suddenly increased exponentially. 
So there were so many, many types of creatures that suddenly appeared at this 550 million years ago that scientists call it as the Cambrian explosion. You can Google it up and read it up further. Cambrian explosion. That is one of the greatest, one of the greatest evidence of Allah's greatness, of Allah's ability to create a multitude of creatures known and unknown, imagined and can't be imagined at a very short interval space of time. And it is a mystery because if you want to talk about evolution to produce such animals like these, right? Evolution to, to cause animals to, 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 to appear shaped like this or like this or like this, then you, you need hundreds of millions of years of evolution. But in the space of just 10 million years, right? After the earth exited from the ice age, in the space of just a few million years, you have an explosion of species, of orders of animals, phylums of animals that defy any classification that makes us wonder how these creatures survive, how they feed, how they reproduce, where is the eye, how they detect each other beyond us. We do not know. It's going to be a mystery forever and ever. Okay, so scientists speculate, well, it may be like this, but it still is a great mystery. Okay, we're going to continue to talk about this uh, Cambrian explosion uh, next week, inshallah, and what happens after that Cambrian explosion. Okay, so we're going to stop here uh, because it's already exceed the uh, time. Let's see if there's any question. Uh, okay, there's no question. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're going to continue next week, inshallah. So we end with Tasbih Kafara and Suratul Asr. Subhanakul Ambika, Shadu Allah, Ilah, Ilah, Anta, Staghfiruka, Wa Tubi Ilaik. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Wa Al-Asr, Wa Al-Salam, Fi Khusr, Ila Al-Ladhina Amnu, Amnu, Salihat, Wa Tawasabu, Haqli, Wa Tawasabu, Salam. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.